In the 1950s, a jet was built that looked familiar, but hit something extraordinary. A machine that promised to outfly the F-100 Super Sabre, carry the nuclear age on his back, and define the future of supersonic warfare. But instead, it disappeared. This is the story of the North American F-107 Ultra Sabre, how it nearly replaced the F-100, but vanished into history. The year was 1953. The jet age was exploding. The United States Air Force wanted speed, altitude, and nuclear capability, and they wanted it all in one aircraft. Inside North American aviation, engineers began designing what they called the F-100B, an evolution of the Super Sabre. It would soon earn a new name, the F-107A Ultra Sabre. Its mission? deliver nuclear weapons at twice the speed of sound and live to tell about it. By August 1954, the Air Force ordered three prototypes. The age of the Ultra Sabre had begun. The F-107 didn't just build on the F-100, it rewrote the rule book. Its engine intake wasn't under the nose, it was mounted above the fuselage, directly behind the cockpit. Why? Because the space underneath was reserved for a semi-conformal nuclear bomb. That one design choice changed everything. Its center of gravity, visibility, and even pilot safety. It also introduced the variable area inlet duct an automated system adjusting airflow for supersonic speeds. It also incorporated an all-moving vertical stabilizer, hydraulic controls, and a design built for Mach 2 flight. This wasn't simply an upgrade, it was a leap into the future. September 10, 1956, Edwards Air Force Base. Test pilot Bob Baker advanced the throttle and made history. The Ultra Sabre broke the sound barrier and soon reached Mach 2. It was faster, more stable, and packed with advanced systems. On paper, it was everything the Air Force wanted and more. The Ultra Sabre had a rival, the Republic 105 Thunder Chief. Both sought the same mission, deliver a nuclear strike at supersonic speed. The F-107 was faster, but the F-105 carried his bombs internally and was closer to production. In 1957, the Air Force chose the Thunder Chief. The F-107 would not proceed. Innovation wasn't enough. Politics and practicality won the day. Two prototypes went to NACA, later NASA, for high-speed aerodynamic research. Though it never went to war, its data shaped future aircraft. Today, one rests at the Air Force Museum in Dayton and the other at Pima Air and Space Museum in Arizona, a silent monument to what might have been. Here's the truth. The F-107 didn't fail. It succeeded spectacularly. It won the performance race, but lost the politics. It wasn't canceled because it couldn't fly, but because strategy took another path. The odd dorsal intake existed only to accommodate its nuclear bomb mount beneath its fuselage. One mission requirement reshaped its fate. The Ultra Sabre vanished, but its innovations lived on, echoing through aircraft like the F-4 Phantom, the F-111, and the F-15 Eagle. So the next time you see a supersonic jet streak across the sky, remember the one that almost was, the F-107 Ultra Sabre. Born in secrecy, built for speed, forgotten by history.
I'm Dennis Gill, and this is Revealing History. If you've learned something new, subscribe, share, and join me next time as we uncover more forgotten innovations and missions that shape the landscape of war. YouTube says you're really gonna like this next video, so, you know, go ahead and click on it.